thinking that you're doing yourself a favor in eating natural fruit, then you're mistaken because it can still add up. And then you have to realize that the fructose is the same. The liver doesn't care if it comes from natural or added sugar, it's still fructose that can only go through the liver. So a few berries, not a big deal, but don't think fruit is this saving grace that you're gonna eat more and more. So if you're insulin sensitive, you can tolerate a certain amount of these foods, even some starch. But if you're trying to reverse a condition and you have a fatty liver and your insulin levels are super high, then you have to do much, much more. You have to be much stricter than a person who's just trying to maintain their insulin sensitivity. Grains have a little bit of fiber and protein and so forth, but most of it is pure glucose. It breaks down very quickly and the glucose becomes blood glucose and stimulates insulin and you have that blood sugar roller coaster that is really not a good idea. To make things even worse, grains are some of the top allergens of any food out there. There's so many people, the majority of people are sensitive to wheat, a lot of people are sensitive to gluten, some people are sensitive to rice and oats and so forth, but it's very, very common. Let's say that we're getting some mercury exposure and we're getting it on a daily basis. Is there any vitamin that we can take to get truly healthy? No, there isn't. Because as long as we have that exposure, we're gonna get sicker and sicker and sicker. And maybe that vitamin can help us tolerate it just a little better, but we're not gonna get healthy until we stop the exposure. So when we talk about superfood, we're missing the big picture because we're getting the idea that there's this miraculous thing like a medication that's just going to stop things, that's going to protect me, right? There is no such thing. Now, I believe that the only reason that we even buy into the notion of a superfood as a remedy is that we've been indoctrinated. We've been conditioned for decades into the thinking of an allopathic model. And what does that allopathic model say? It says that if we have a symptom and then we take a remedy, now that's going to have an effect. So because of that remedy, now we get relief and we're made to believe that that's going to make everything okay. But if we understand that that symptom only happened because something isn't working, then we also understand that that remedy is not actually going to make anything work better because that symptom came about because something is missing or something is interfering. And that remedy is not going to provide anything that's missing and it's not going to remove anything that's interfering. It's just going to stop the symptom. It's going to block the signals. So now that we block the signal with the remedy, we get relief, but we also have the continued dysfunction because nothing really changed. We didn't make anything work better. So we have dysfunction and we have some damage because when something isn't working, whatever damage is being created is going to be allowed to continue. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.